Welcome. I'm Al Pieper, the head of the Port Asset Program at Des Moines Area Community College. And I'm here to explain what this program is. I intend to explain again what it is, what you will be doing in the program, what our goals of the program are, and ways to get into the program. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Ford Asset is a two-year college program sponsored by Ford Motor Company and their dealers. Ford and the dealers got together years ago and decided to come up with an alternative, not a change totally, but an alternative through their factory training programs to give students an option to get through a training program that's a little quicker. So they developed this as a co-op type training where you will spend half your time at the college in classes and the other half you will spend out at the dealership working in the shops, applying the skills that you learned in the classes and be working with a mentor. And since Ford does sponsor this program, it is Ford specific training. We do cover the basics, so you're getting good basic automotive training, but we will take you to the level of getting Ford specific and doing some of their factory training materials. This program, Ford supplies our school with the vehicles we will be working on. They try to keep us as up to date as we can. We depend on natural disasters and reacquired vehicles that Ford sends us. As you can see in the pictures here, we got some that are heavily damaged from a hailstorm, and others are, again, buyback type vehicles. So we're getting some of the latest vehicles to be able to teach with the latest equipment. Um, we also get the latest equipment from Ford. So we're not just teaching you about the equipment on the vehicles and the systems and stuff. We're also going to teach you how to use their diagnostic equipment to make you more efficient in when you're doing your diagnosis of the vehicle. The scan tool down there um, will do more than just pull codes and stuff. It looks at data stream information. It looks at the modules. We can go in and active command things. We can um, diagnose things through uh, other pinpoint steps in that scan tool. It's also an oscilloscope. So we can look at um, electrical signals and so forth as they're going on in live data type things. And, and it's also a vibration analyzer. So you can go out and try to find a vibration that maybe you can feel, but you don't know exactly where it's coming from. It will help you pinpoint it down. So, with the, the vehicles and the latest technology and stuff and using the latest technology and scan tools, you're learning both of those sides of it should make you an overall very efficient person at diagnosing the vehicles. As the instructor of the program, I'm fully Ford trained and certified. Ford requires that I continually go back to update training to make sure that I'm be able to share the latest technology with the students in the class. We also use the Ford factory training materials we start off with a general automotive textbook, and as we go through the things, we'll get you up to the point where we can get you certified on the Ford materials by using their books as well. In the classroom, when you're here at school, we're going to cover a lot about theory. How does the hydraulic theories work? How do AC system theory work? And go through a lot of that stuff. We'll get into the operation of systems. How does a system operate? How do you find, if you don't know how it operates, where do you find that material on how a system is going to operate? And then we get into the diagnostic side of it. And we'll go through diagnostic sequences. Some systems have a different sequence than others. So we go through a lot of different ones as far as how do you get from a concern that a customer has to the solution and what you're going to fix on the vehicle. So we talk about those in the classroom. We'll put in some um, scenario things, and then we'll go out to the lab. And we'll put problems in the vehicles. And now the student has to go through that vehicle, taking the concern that we've given them and use the skills that we've talked about in the classroom and start applying those things and putting that stuff into place. First off, reading the shop menu. How does the system operate? Then going through, looking at bulletins, if there's any special bulletins on these things, all the way down to doing a pinpoint step and coming up with a conclusion as to what the problem may be with the vehicle. Then we'll come back to the classroom and we'll discuss this and we'll talk about what they found, how they got to that point, And they come up to the conclusion where it's at this point on the vehicle. We don't go ahead and fix the problems because every group of students has to get through this. But we'll talk then about how do you fix this problem? If it's a cut wire, how do you repair a cut wire? If it's an engine issue, how do you repair the engine issue? And then we'll go out and we'll start applying some of those things. We'll tear apart engines and stuff in the lab to be able to make the measurements on it and know how you're gonna fix it at that point in time. Do the same thing with transmissions, brake systems, and so forth. From here, you take that stuff out to the dealership and you start applying those skills while you're at the dealership. You're out there, 
you're going to start seeing some of the same things we did in class. Hopefully you can start applying the processes we went through here for your diagnostic steps and so forth. But when you're out there, you have a mentor to work with. You have somebody to turn to that will always be there to assist you and help you. So hopefully you don't get in over your head on something and break problems. That's what we're trying to avoid. But if you do break something, what do you do about it? And that's the nice thing about this program is since you're actually doing live work in a, in a business, what happens? You can go through now and see the process of how it goes, um, who's repairing it, who's paying for it, and how it's going to be fixed. Because a customer doesn't have to pay for something that you broke on their vehicle. So you also probably see how a parts department functions, how the service advisor functions. So you see a lot of other things while you're out there in that dealership other than just the process of fixing the car, but that's our main goal, but you see the other stuff as well. Since this is an associate's degree program, there's also other courses involved. There's a math class, basic level math, um, nothing high level in it. We're not talking trigonometry and stuff like this. There's a physics class. Everything about a car has something to do with physics. So this ties in well with our program. There's a communication skills class. This class, again, how do you write a resume? How do you do a job interview? How do you communicate with these types of things? We have a human relations in business class. So how do you get along with your coworkers in a business setting? How do you talk to your manager? How do you talk to the owner? And so forth in this class. So it's a good overall, how does a business work in the relationship side of things. Then we have an interpersonal speech class. It's not about giving speeches, it's about being able to read body language. So if somebody comes into you and you can kind of sense that they're not happy with what you're telling them, you can kind of read that so you know how to adjust what you're saying. This doesn't necessarily meet what you're gonna be doing in the shop, but if you wanted to be a service writer or a service manager, that's where these skills come in handy. So this class is more about helping you advance your way up into the dealership management type areas. Goals of our program. Number one goal is to provide our dealership with technicians of quality in current technology. We want people that understand the technology of the day. How do we get you there? Well, we usually start with things of the past. How did we do things? And we build up to this is how it's done today. I'll use ignition system as an example. We used to use a mechanical point system that would open and close to charge and collapse the fields in the coil. Well, today we're still got to open and close and charge and collapse the field in the coil to get the spark to make the engine run, but we do it differently. We do it with electronics. We use sensors and all kinds of things to do that. So we kind of bring you through that transition to where we're at today with all the different systems we're going to go on. Hopefully, if you can understand what we've done there, can you understand what What's happening in the future? Can you apply what's on today's vehicles? What's gonna be on tomorrow's vehicles? I talk a lot about the self-driving or autonomous vehicles. Are we doing things today on vehicles that will tie into those systems? And yeah, we are. We're doing things with um, the self-parking vehicles and the, the ones that have lane departure systems and stuff. This all will tie into what's going on in the future. So these things, if you can understand this, you can apply it to the future. So hopefully you can understand those things as well. We also want to make sure that you earn your associate's degree. Why do you want to earn that associate's degree? Because it's very important. It shows people that you commit to something and you finish what you start. You don't just give up in the middle. That's what employers want to see. People who are qualified and can do the job and continue with the job. So it's plus it's something you put on your resume. Nobody can take that away from you. So it's a good thing to have. Along with that, if you earn your associate's degree, you can also earn that Ford factory certifications I talked about. We can give you a few of the basic ones, but we can't give you the advanced ones unless you get the degree. So those certifications can be very valuable to you. When you get out there and start working, this means you can do more work. Dealers will not usually let you work on systems that you aren't certified in. Ford Motor Company, when you're working on a vehicle under warranty, requires you have that certification. Example, a vehicle comes in with a brake issue. If you aren't certified to work on brakes, they won't pay the, they won't pay for the claim. They won't pay for the work to get done. And dealers also take that further and they just require that for everybody, for any job that comes into the shop. So it's very important that you have these certifications. These are yours. Nobody takes these away from you. So you get to keep these. 
and the dealers want you to have these so that they can allow you to do more work. I've talked to some dealers who say, yeah, that they hire people that come out of a general automotive program. They've got good basic skills, but they can't really give them any work because they don't have the certifications for it. So in order for them to get certifications, it would take them about seven to 10 years for the dealer to send them back to the Ford training centers to get that. So with our program, you get this all done in about two years. So a very big plus there. And that's our goal that you will get to that level. Job placement. With this program, our jobs re our grads receive full-time employment. Why? Because they were sponsored by a dealer in the first place. That dealer sponsored that student, sponsored you as an individual because they were looking to replace somebody that was either retiring or just leaving. They needed new people or they're growing their business. So that's why they sponsor students in the program. That's why you will have a job when you're done. If you prove to them that you are a valuable employee that works hard, you've got a job. About 99.9% .9 of my students will leave here with a job. As it says five years later, I still have 70% of my students working in the dealer that sponsored them. This is a nice thing to have because now those students are training current students. So it's a big plus. This shows that when you leave, you get a job and there's a career field that you can be in for a long period of time because they, dealers believe in this program. Qualifications needed. Good math, reading and writing skills. What do you need math skills for? There's a lot of things you're going to be measuring, figuring out clearances and specifications for how much end plays you might have and so forth. Will the rotor fit the way it's supposed to? Does it meet specifications? We have a transmission that right now that you have to do like seven or eight different measurements just to come up with what the clearance is in one spot. So you're doing some addition, you're doing some subtraction, you're doing multiplication, and you're also doing division, all these steps just to come up with what one number is to know what size one shim. So you gotta have good skills in that area. Reading skills. Why are reading skills important? Well, you gotta be able to read the service information to number one, know how the system operates. If you don't know how it operates, how do you know if it's failing or not? So you have to be able to read and understand how it operates. Then if you determine that it's not operating correctly, how are you gonna go through the diagnostic process of fixing it? You've gotta read through pinpoint steps as well as repair procedures to know how you're gonna fix the problem. So it's very important you can read these steps. I get students who go out and start applying the skills when they get here at the lab, and they'll come back to me with the results and they'll say, this is what I came up with as the, the problem for the concern that you put in there. And I'll go, how did you get to that point? Let's go back and look at the steps. And generally, when we go back, it's always because they didn't read a step or they read it and they didn't quite understand what the step was saying to do, but they just went on with what they thought was the right result and they came up with the wrong conclusion. So you gotta have some good reading skills and be able to understand what you're reading there. Writing skills. Why is writing important? Well, you've made these repairs, the car's fixed, it goes out the door. You gotta write down now, what did you do to that vehicle? It came in with a concern. What did I do to fix this concern? This is generally how you're gonna get paid off from a flat rate system. Also, the customer wants to know what was repaired on their vehicle. When they're done, they wanna know what they spent their money on. At the same time, Ford Motor Company wants to know what's going on. So they wanna see what's happening as well. So you gotta write up the story as to what's going on. How do you do this? Well, an example would be a car came in with a, a, a light out, a tail light out. So you bring it in, you write, the first thing you're gonna write down is I verified the concern. From there, I looked up special messages, there was no messages. I ran self-test. I ran through a diagnostic self-test or pinpoint steps. In those pinpoint steps that I did, I did step A1, it gave me a result of 12 volts. I did A2, it gave me a result of something. A3 gave me a result of something. You document these down to where it says, there's a cut wire between this point and this point. Now I have to repair that wire. So I need to maybe pull up the carpet and get underneath there to repair the wire. That may require me removing the driver's seat to get the carpet lifted up. Those are things you write down that you had to do. Then you get all done with it, you put down, I verified my concern, everything was working right. So now you're done. This way people can go back and say, okay, if the car came back into me, 
customer who brought it back said the power seat doesn't work well. Is it the driver's seat or the passenger seat? Because I had the driver's seat out. Well, they said it's the passenger seat. So that's not really related, probably not related to what I did. But if it was the driver's seat, it might be related to what I did. And again, the customer then can see what was done to their vehicle. And Ford Motor Company could basically pick up a shop manual and walk through step by step and see how you got to that conclusion by just looking at the results that you put down there. So it's important to have some good writing skills and be able to detail things out. Good school attendance. This comes down to this program. Again, you're only in class for half the semester. You're here for eight weeks of a 16 week semester. We're still doing 16 weeks worth of work in that length of time. So it's important that you're here every day, otherwise you're gonna miss out on a lot of knowledge. So we want you here. If you're sick and got the flu or something, yeah, stay home. But if you just stub the toe, you I think you could make it to class and still get in time and, and learn the skills that we're teaching on those, those days. This also ties into when you go to work at the dealer. Are you going to show up to work on time? I've had dealers who, when I've gone out to visit, say, hey, this student doesn't show up to, just doesn't show up to work when he should. And I start thinking, well, maybe he, did he show up to class when he should? So now we got to work on an issue here. So it's important that you start that right now, get used to being, having a good attendance, showing up when you're supposed to, very important to have. A good attitude. I want people in the program that wanna be here. I want people that wanna learn. I want people that wanna get into discussions about the things we're talking about. We don't want people here who are a disruptor. Again, this is the Ford program. I want people who wanna learn boards, learn automobiles. Yeah, if you wanna be a GM guy and all you wanna do is cause disruption in class, that's really not what we're looking for. So we're looking for people with that positive edit. If you don't like doing this side of work, go find something you really do enjoy. Go to take a GM program or a different automotive program if that's what you want to do. But pick an area where you're going to be happy, you're going to enjoy yourself, because down the road, that's where you're going to make the money and you're going to be happy with your career pick. A good driving record. We need people that have good driving records because when you go out to get that job, that's what the dealer is going to look at. Their insurance company is going to look at your driving history and see how well it is. If you've got major moving violations, there's a good chance you're not going to get picked as a student to be in the program. Because when you're at the dealership, you're under their insurance. You're driving quite expensive vehicles. And if you wreck a vehicle, somebody's paying for that. So they want to make sure they have people that have good driving records. And this doesn't affect you just in this industry, it affects you anywhere where you will be driving vehicles. So if you got a clean record, keep it clean. If you don't, get it straightened out. And it doesn't affect just you starting as a new entry level person. It affects people who've been around for years. I know of a technician that got let go from the dealer because he went out and had a major moving violation. He was a top tech but the dealer had to let him go because their insurance company would no longer insure them if he stayed on. So it's an important thing to have. How do you enroll in the program? First off, you go to DMAC, to the website. You're gonna complete the application on there. Uh, it's all online. You fill out some personal information that will ask you what campus you wanna be on. The asset program is on the urban campus, so make sure you pick that. Other auto programs are on the Ankeny campus. Um, once you complete the application, there's assessment testing you need to do. We look at these test scores from the assessment testing just to see what level you're at. So we can kind of figure out how much assistance you might need in areas. I generally don't cut somebody out of the program because of a test score. But when I'm doing the interview with you, we'll talk about areas you might need extra assistance where you might struggle a little bit. So we can make sure that you succeed in the program and get you that assistance in. So you will succeed in the program because that's what we want. We wanna see that you succeed in the program. We will also talk about your goals. What are your goals to get out of this program? We'll talk about the detailed scheduling of how the classes run semester to semester, what your day will look like as you go through the program, and some of the more specific things that we are doing. From there, we'll also talk about the dealership. What are you gonna be doing at the dealership? And where do you find this dealership? Which ties into the next step. You have to find a dealer to sponsor you. We'll talk to you about what dealers are looking, what dealers might be not looking for technicians at this time, and try to get you in a place where you really want to be, get you to a dealership that you want to be in 
not just one for us to place you in. Because I want you to be where you're going to be for a long period of time where you can have, make a good career out of it. From there, you'll register for classes. This usually happens in the summertime. Um, once things are all set and ready to go, classes get registered for, then we start classes. Another question I get asked is how much does the program cost? Well, currently the program costs about 13.5 for the tuition and books. These are things that vary all the time. We can't control the cost of that, but that's a rough idea what that costs. Along with the program, there's tools that you will have to purchase. Some people already have tools, so this cost doesn't affect them, but there's a tool package that we list out there for a basic set of tools, and that's the approximate cost of that package. Now, if this Tool package is at about 50% of its original cost. This is because the tool vendors that we work with, the major tool companies, Snap on Mac, MacPro, and so forth, they give a big discount to the students that are coming to school for those tools. So you're really getting about $8,000 worth of tools. So it's not a bad deal to have. So that makes the program cost about $17,500. Seems like a lot maybe, but when you put that in perspective, uh, one year at a four-year school, that's about what that costs you. This is for the whole program. So with that in mind, there's other options you can do to help offset that cost. The Iowa Auto Dealers Association has a $2,500 scholarship. They actually give out 20 of these. So there's a good chance if you apply for it, you can get it. This scholarship requires you to have a dealer to sign off with you on it. So again, if you're going into this program, you've already got that dealer. I've had some students who've gotten the scholarship two years in a row because they started before early on, got it for the first year, and then the second year where they're here, they applied again and got it a second time. Um, Ford also offers a scholarship of $1,000 to only asset students. So you will only be competing against your fellow classmates for that. They offer four of those for us. So there's another $1,000 you get. The other thing to keep in mind is that since you're working on those co-ops, it's an internship program, you're getting paid while you're out there. So if you took the money you got paid while you were out working and applied it to your tuition, as you can see, you would almost offset the entire cost because you'll make approximately $16,000. Depends on how much they're paying you per hour, but approximately that much money. So that pretty much offsets the cost. So you shouldn't leave with a whole lot of debt when you go through this program. How much can I make? That's a good question. Well, our college survey showed your first year out, make an average of about $40,000. Students that got the good skills or really pick up on it, got good skills and what they're doing might make more than that. Students who are still, you know, working a little bit, struggling, I won't say struggling so much, but still got a little more learning to do, might not make quite that much. But as time goes on and you get better at the skills and everything, Three years out from the program, three to five years, the average salary is around 55 to 65,000. Some dealers say that might be a little on the low side, so it could be higher than that. It just depends on how hard you wanna work and how much time you wanna put in. I know of some well-experienced master techs that are making over $100,000. They don't just put in eight hours a day. They're really good at what they do and they'll put in eight to 10 hours a day. They generally don't stop at the end of the day and go home. They wait till the, their job they're working on is finished before they go home. This way, the next day, they've got a new job to start in with. So if you want to work that hard, you can make a lot of money. So the range of making money is quite large in this, in this work area. And you can make a good living doing it. So I want to thank you for listening to me. This is my contact information. Again, I'm Al Peeper. I'm the head of the program. Um, you can send me emails with questions or call me, leave a message if I don't answer, detailed about what you're looking for. There's a, the, our webpage here at the college, that UR link will take you directly to that webpage. So if you have any further questions or anything, please reach out and contact me. Go to the website. There's some videos there and more information there as well. Again, thank you and have a good day.